That's it. We're here. We're starting a new class. We are in the Gospel of Luke. We are in <laughs> chapter 11, 11. And we're going to pick up... Um, I think we're actually going to pick up with verse 29. I, I, I We did a little bit of verse 29 because we drew it like this. Uh, so we did, did it a little bit. Well, we're just going to pick up in Luke chapter 11, starting in verse 29, and we will see how far we get. So I'm going to hold on to my hat <clears throat> and hope that my brains don't explode. So here we go. There we are now. I'm hoping that you can remember what we talked about last. The clues are the picture of big fish with the guy in it, and the fish spits the dude out, as well as the guy's name right here in yellow with the sign of Jonah. So we're going to pick up with that today. And when the multitudes were gathering together unto him, he began to say, this generation is an evil generation. It seeks after a sign. And there shall no sign be given it but the sign of Jonah. For even as Jonah became a sign unto the Ninevites, so shall the Son of Man be to this generation. And we drew that idea. Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days, and then he came out from, I mean, he wasn't in a grave, but the darkness of the sea. Jesus was in the tomb for three days, and he came out from death into resurrection, and that's going to be this great sign that Jesus is going to give to the people. They were asking for fancy miracles, and Jesus says, you just, you're just asking selfishly. You just wait. The sign is going to come. So now we're going to pick up in verse 31. The queen of the south shall rise up in judgment with the men of this generation, and she shall condemn them. All right, so I'm going to, I'm going to draw this in stages. We have here a queen, and she's got her, I don't know, that's not a very good crown, but there she is, and she's going to be angry in judgment, finger-pointing judgment, against the men of this generation. See, they're hanging their heads down low. She's going to condemn them. Why is she going to condemn this generation? Well, let's read. The queen of the south shall rise up in judgment against the men of this generation, and she shall condemn them. For she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. Okay, so the queen of the south came to listen to the wisdom of Solomon. But then Jesus says, greater than Solomon is here. What does he mean greater than Solomon is here? A greater person. Uh-huh, that's right. There's a greater person than Solomon. So she came from really far away to hear a great Solomon but there's a greater person than Solomon. Who do you think that greater person is? Jesus. Jesus. And are these people coming to listen to Jesus or are they kind of acting rude to Jesus? Yeah. She's going to say, why, why didn't you listen to Jesus? See, she's accusing them. I'll give her earrings because girls need earrings. In my pictures. There you go. All right, so that's the first one, the queen of the south. I'll put a one next to her. Now we're at number two, the men of Nineveh. The men of Nineveh shall stand up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. I don't know what a Ninevite guy looks like, but I'm just going to draw him here, and he's going to have a beard. And he's going to be the same way. He's going to be angry. And he's going to have a hat as well. And he's not going to have an earring. He's pointing, and he's got his hand on his hip, too. The men of Nineveh shall stand up in this generation and condemn it, for they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and behold, a greater than Jonah is here. Hey, it's that same phrase. So 
When Jonah came and preached to the people of Nineveh, what did the people of Nineveh do? Obey. They obeyed. They repented and obeyed. <laughs> but now there's someone greater than Jonah. Who's greater than Jonah? Jesus. Jesus. And are they going to listen to Jesus like the Queen of the South? No. no. Are they repenting from the words of Jesus like the men of Nineveh? No. no. And so I'll put an N so we know he's a Ninevite. He, he's, Jesus is trying to say, you guys need to take advantage of the fact that Jesus is here and listen to him. No man, when he has lighted a lamp, puts it in a cellar, neither under a bushel, but on a stand, that they which enter may see the light. Have you guys heard about this before? Yes. Let's draw a lamp. I like drawing it kind of like a genie lamp. I don't know. I don't think that's what they looked like, but I'm going to draw it like that. Here we go. Here's a lamp, and it's going to have a fiery light. All right. So here's the light lamp. Oh, someone trying to jump in. There's the light. And when you light a lamp, are you supposed to put it under a bushel. No, I'm gonna oh. let it shine. Put it under a bushel. No. Oh, I'm messing it up. Bushel, I think, is just a basket, right? Here comes this basket. Oh, I better draw it black underneath, right? Because that's the point. It's gonna stop all the light. So here it is. Here's this basket. Put the lamp under a basket? No. No. We need to let it shine. And so, oh, I didn't even mean to do this, but look at this. The light is still able to shine on these two people, right? But it's not able to shine on these guys because they're not going to the light. I didn't even mean to draw it that way, and it kind of worked out that way. I'll put a little bit of burnished bronze. So this is the issue. Jesus is saying, you need to come to the light. You need to come to the understanding. You need to not hide it under a bushel, no. You need to not darken the, the scene. You need to not make things dark and bad. Okay. And this is one of my favorite kinds of verses right here. Make them. Go. The lamp of the body is thine eye. If thine eye be single, thy whole body also is full of light. But when it is evil, thy body shall be full of darkness. I love this verse, guys. This is one of my favorites. I'm going to put it in blue, and we're going to draw it on the board behind because I'm running out of room here. Okay, I'm going to read it again. The lamp of the body is the eye. When the eye is single, your whole body is also full of light. But when it is evil, your body is full of darkness. So we're going to draw two people with eyeballs, which is a lot of fun. This is one of my favorite Bible verses, guys. Now, it's said in the verse, when your eye is single. Most translations use, that's the old translation. Um, most of the um, newer translation says if your eye is healthy. But I'm going to go with the old single eye because I think that's pretty interesting. All right, it looks like there's a hand raised at the Dobbs house. Do you guys still have a question? Um, I was just going to ask what it meant with the single eye. Oh, perfect. Well, I'll keep talking about it. Yes, if your whole eye is single. And I'm going to draw it this way. Now, does he mean that we all need to have only one eyeball, a single eye? No. No, God made us with two eyeballs. Now, if you break an eye and your eye is broken, that's sad. But God's not going to be angry. That's not the point. Um, let's see. Mr. Tweedy, your hand is up. What's your question? Oh, uh, does single mean 
One. Yes, that's what that means. It means one. Okay. But I'm going to draw what he's talking about. We're going to draw two people. I'm going to, I'm not even going to use mouths yet. I'm going to be careful about it. Now I'm going to draw them both with two eyeballs, but you'll get the point. All right, so one of them is going to look correctly and one of them is going to look poorly, okay? Actually, I'm going to have them both looking in the same direction. That's probably better. Hold on. All right, so right over here, we're going to have the Bible... Here's the Bible. And then I need to draw some sort of sin. Maybe I'll put an idol. Like we'll just do idolatry, okay? We'll do idolatry. Um, we'll do some sort of idol that looks like this with horns. I don't know what idols look like, right? That there's the idol. Okay, there's the idol. And it has feet down here. Okay. So I just drew a little idol. I don't know. I don't know if that looks like an idol. Okay. So which is the guy who's going to be good? And which one is going to be bad? Do you want this to be good? And this one bad? Yes. Okay. Yeah. We'll put him as, he's the good guy. And this is the bad guy. And we're going to show why. If his eye is single, that doesn't mean we cut out an eyeball. But he is looking one way. So let's draw single sight. What's he going to look at if he's good? Is he going to look at the Bible or is he going to yes. look at the Bible? Bible. The Bible. So here's this eyeball. And he's looking right at the Bible. What's he doing with his other eyeball? What's his other eyeball looking at? I don't know. If his eye is single and he's trying to be good, where does he put both of his eyes? On the Bible. So I don't think it means he has one single eyeball, but he's looking at one single thing. So what do you think this guy's trying to look at? The eel. But he might also say, oh, I look at the Bible too. Think about that. What if this eye is looking at the Bible and this eye is looking at the idol? Is his sight, is his eye single? No. No. Is it good he's looking at the Bible? Yes. Yes. But if he's also looking at the idol, and not just like, oh, I see one on the street over there, but he's like, looking at it. You know what I mean? Like, really yeah. looking at it. He doesn't have a single eye, does he? He's sending one eye to one thing and another eye to another thing. If you try to look to the right and to the left at the same time, your okay. eyes are going to, you're going to get all broken and you're not going to be able to walk straight and you'll have problems. But if we have single sight, that's when we're healthy. And that's what it means, if thine eye be single. And the other thing it said was that the light in you will be great. I'm just going to draw a heart because I don't have good yellow. So here's his heart. And since he's looking at one thing, it's got lots of great light and he's just doing really well, right? Yeah. What do you think this guy's heart is like? 
It's bad. Because he's looking in two ways at once and it's creating problems and it's creating darkness. All right, I see the Dobbs hand is up. Yes, Dobbs family. Um, I was just going to say that the heart on the bad guy's person, it doesn't fit together because the cracks aren't right. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I didn't draw it perfect. So that's a, this is one of my favorite verses. We need to choose one thing or the other thing. We can't try to look at both. We've got to choose the one. All right, Mr. Tweedy, I see your hand up, too. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Since he believes in two things, how about you don't have two hearts? Because he believes in two things? Well, how about that? I broke his heart into two pieces. I'll just leave it like that. But that's a really good point. He doesn't yeah. have a single heart. He has a broken heart. I like that. Okay, so I'm going to write that down. Because we were talking about single Oops, single eye, but it's also a single heart. And if you don't want to write the words out, you can just draw an eyeball. And a, and a heart. A single eye or a single heart. That's the idea, right? Yeah. This is what God wants us to have. I'll color it red. Because these Pharisees and these people that were grouchy at Jesus, they, they liked God, but they also liked their own things, and they just kind of had their, their sight divided. Okay, let's see. Bingham House, I see a hand up. What's up? Um, I was just saying... When you drew the bad guy with the broken heart, you had um, it broken, so there's two parts. Yeah. But one part could go to the idol and one could go to the Bible. Yeah, that's true. That's true. All right, so here's a whole heart. We put a whole heart in here. This is good. But if we try to do a half part, okay. half part it's just going to be a mess. All right, so we're going to go back to the test. Oh, yeah? What was that? all right so we'll go back to the text and do some more we're going slow today man you guys are finding all sorts of sermons to talk about verse 35 look therefore whether the light that is in thee be not dark if therefore thy whole body shall be full of light having no part dark it shall be wholly full of light as when the lamp is bright shining, does give thee light. Does that make sense? Yeah. If we're looking singly, it's going to come in and we're going to have all this light and and all this light is going to shine out. Can, does this shining come out? No, it doesn't even show up hardly at all. What's a shining color? Here's a shining color. All this, all this shine is going to come out because... He's got this whole single heart. This is what we want. This is what we want. Whereas this guy, when he's letting a little bit of darkness in, it's just going to create a whole lot of ugly darkness. And he's going to be living in that darkness. And we need to not live in the darkness. Okay. Okay. So let's keep reading. Let's keep reading. I think you guys are understanding these ideas. Okay. Now, as he spoke, a Pharisee asked him to dine with him, and he went in and sat down to meet. This is an old translation. I think they ate more than meat, but that's just the way it was written in this translation. They sat down to meat. They probably sat down to some vegetables and bread, too. And when the Pharisee saw it, he marveled that he had not first washed, washed before dinner. What did Jesus not do? Wash before dinner. He didn't wash. Probably his hands, right? I'm going to draw some hands. And here's like a bowl with some water in it so that he would be able to wash. Now, 
Does your mama want you to wash your hands before dinner? Not yeah. always. Yeah, not always. Does she like it, though? Yeah. And so he's wondering, why didn't Jesus do a good thing? Mama doesn't. Isn't that interesting? Some mamas do want you to wash your hands. Some don't really mind that much. And he's wondering about this. And so... Hmm, I've got some red things on my screen. Oh, well. And the Lord said unto him, Now do you Pharisees cleanse the outside of the cup and of the platter, but your inward part is full of extortion and wickedness. You foolish ones, did not he that make the outside make the inside also? Howbeit, give for alms those things which are within, and behold, all things are clean for you. We're going to start. We're going to stop there. So is it good to wash your hands before dinner? Is that a good thing to do? Yes. Yes. And here's the question. Is there a is there a rule in like Genesis or in Philippians, thou shalt wash thine hands? No. 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 It's a good thing to wash your hands, right? But it's not like thou shalt wash us to thinest handus at the thus. It doesn't say that. And the Pharisee was kind of getting a little bit grouchy about Jesus not washing his hands. So then Jesus gave him an example. And he says, you guys wash the outside of the cup and the plate. So here we can draw a cup. I'm going to draw a teacup. Mostly because I think tea is a wonderful drink. So here's the teacup and we'll put it on a saucer, right? And here's a plate, right? So where did Jesus say they were washing the cup and platter? Only on the outside. They were washing the outside. Do you know why somebody washes the outside of a cup? Make it look dirty. Because it's dirty and to make it look good, right? Here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you an example. I didn't think to bring a cup. This is a, a like a pencil cup, right? And like, oh, 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 there's a, there's a mess on it. Oh, let me let me just kind of clean that up. Oh, now it's clean, but I'm not letting you guys see inside here, right? You want to see what's inside there? No, no, it's all clean. I'll give you a big glass of milk in this cup. Is that okay? No, no. I don't want you to see the inside though, but I cleaned the outside really well. Was it? Will it take more work for me to clean the inside too? Yes. Yes. Should I do it even though it's more work? Yes. 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 You want to see what's inside there? Pencils and like pencil dirt. I don't think. I don't want a, milk in that. I don't think there's a bug in there. There's no bug, so it's okay, right? You can drink out of I that. I want. I still don't want milk in it. Yeah. It's okay because the milk will just soak up all that pencil lead. Might yeah. have like, poisoning. You don't want that, right? Well, look at what Jesus is saying that they're doing. They're saying you're cleansing the outside of the cup. You're making. I'm gonna try to make it like like it's clean. I'm gonna draw like yellow. Okay. Oh, look how clean it's bright and it's white. Oh, the outside of this cup and plate are really clean but your inward part is full of extortion and wickedness. Those are just two different kinds of words for ugliness. So I'm going to put ugly sin. I don't know how to draw the back of the plate. I'm going to draw like red. That was kind of orangey red. And here's some more red. And then I'm going to do like brown dirt. All right. So here's the brown dirt shining from the back of the plate. Isn't that disgusting? Yeah. Yes. They are worried about, oh, you didn't wash your hands. Well, is Jesus clean in his heart? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. What's more important, washing your hands or washing your heart? Washing your heart. Yeah. Do you think Jesus does wash his hands sometimes? Yeah. 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 Maybe Jesus yeah. washed his hands like five minutes ago and the guy didn't see it. Right? 
Yeah. Maybe, maybe he hadn't done anything gross with his hands. But Jesus was really worried about the heart. Does it matter if this man has clean hands? No. It doesn't matter if your hands are clean if you have a broken heart. So Jesus is saying, don't just clean the outside that people see. Clean the inside that people cannot see. You foolish ones, did not he that make the outside make the inside also? Howbeit, give alms of those things which are within, and behold, all things are clean to you. What does it mean to give alms? What are alms? Money to the poor. Money to the poor. And so he's saying, give alms. I'm going to draw a hand. Oh, I guess I need to use blue. This guy's body is going to be weird because now I'm using it for another one. We need to draw alms that come from our heart. So he's got a hand coming back to his heart, which is kind of weird. Um, and I'll draw like a dollar bill, okay? Uh, uh, green. Here's his money. Uh, $10, right? There's, there's. You need to give alms from within. And not just money. But you need to give gifts. You need to give sacrifices. You need to give not just a clean outside cup, but a clean inside cup. Love. Love. Do you think that this guy has much love to give? Nope. But he oh. says, oh, I'll give you, I'll give you this clean cup. Who cares about the clean cup on the outside if it's dirty on the inside? And I think that that's what Jesus is saying. You guys need to be clean through and through. Okay, let's see. Bunting House, your hand has been up. I'm sorry I missed you earlier. Mm. Sorry. So there's also like a verse and it talks about if you have the inside clean, the outside will become clean. So you work on the inside first because yeah. if you don't work on the inside. People can probably see right through it and you'll look even like less clean than ever. So you yeah. really just want on the inside. Working on the inside, right? That's exactly right. I like that connection. And so if we're looking to one thing, if our eye is single and we work on the inside, then everything we give will be good. I like that. Let's see, Dobbs House, your hand is up again. Hello. I was just going to say that if your heart is clean, then that's really what matters. It doesn't matter if the rest of you are clean because like, you could be ragged and unattractive on the outside but on the inside mm -hmm. you are doing your best not to sin and to do what god wants it's exactly right that's exactly right here's a really good example here's a good example is cleaning toilets at buildings and office parks and and uh, bus stations and cleaning the toilet in big places like that is that a clean job no very no. no. Do you think that when you're yeah. done cleaning a thousand toilets, you might be a little bit gross? Yeah. yeah. So that means no one should ever clean a toilet again. No. No. no, we, no, want, no. we want somebody to clean our toilets. And if they get dirty, we're like, that's okay. Here, let me give you some soap. Let me help you out. Because they're doing a good job for us, right? Are we angry because they got dirty hands? No. No. We're thankful that they got dirty hands for us. That's a good mixture of having a good heart for other people. I like that. All right, let's read a few more verses and see how far we can get. You guys are coming up with so many sermons from these passages. I think you just understand it. All right. Um, verse 42. But woe unto you Pharisees, for you tithe. Do you know what it means to tithe? You heard of that word? What does it mean to tithe? Is it to compare? No, it's a good guess. It's about giving. It's a giving of 10%. So um, a lot of Christians, they'll give money on uh, to their church. And the Old Testament, they had to give a certain amount of money. They would give it um, to, 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 to God. And one of the Old Testament words about that was tithe. So it's about giving to God, okay? So let's go back. Woe unto you Pharisees, for you tithe, or you give, mint and rue 
and every herb and pass over judgment and the love of God. But these ought you to have done and not to leave the others undone. This is a funny one. This is a funny one. They are tithing what things? They are tithing mint and rue and every herb, but they are not tithing judgment and love of God. I think we can draw that back here. Here is the man, and he is, what is he giving? He is giving in his hand to God mint and rue and every herb. Let me admit that person. I, don't, I can't draw every herb, so I'm going to draw some leaves in his hand, right? Because that's what herbs are, right? Spices and herbs are, are leaves. So here are some leaves from his mother's um, herb. There. Do you think it takes a lot of work to pick out the right number of leaves and give them to God? Yes. Yeah, yes. that probably took a lot of work. But what did he not give? His heart. Yeah. The specific ones were um, judgment. Which is like, if he saw um, one big kid picking on another little kid, he didn't come in and judge and say, hey, stop that. He didn't help the, 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 the little kid. And he That's also... Judgment. Yeah, and he also didn't give love to God. So here's the question. If he's spending a lot of time counting out all the leaves from his garden so that he gives God the right number of leaves, but, oh. he, but he's not giving God this, we got to break it off, right? He's not giving God that stuff. Does this work? Yeah. No. No. It's good that you're giving God leaves. I mean, but you need to give God judgment and the love of God. They got their priorities all out of order. All right, let's see. Um, there have been some hands up. I know the Bingham hand was up a little bit earlier. Did you still have something to say? I think I missed you earlier. Um, I it was something about before. Um, my uh my morning chore is to clean the bathroom. Mm -hmm. I hey. have to do it every day. I, it's an important job. We need you to clean the bathroom. I appreciate. Yeah, so is my. So is mine. Oh boy, it's a good and job. I. All right, and then the Dobbs hand is up. What do you have to say, Dobbs family? Um, I was just going to say about the tithes. Is it kind of like um when you go to church, they have like a bag or a box that you can put the contribution bag or something like that, and you put money and you give it to people who need it. Is exactly. that kind of what tithes? It's exactly what it is. It's just the Old Testament law about it. And and Jesus is talking in the New Testament, but he hasn't given the new laws about the contribution at the church. So it's the, it's the same thing. It's just the old word for it from the Old Testament. Okay. Okay. Good connection. Uh, Amos uh, has a hand. I also mm -hmm. believe that they would give tithes to the priests because the Levites didn't have any inheritance Mm -hmm. And their inheritance was God, so they would give a portion of their inheritance to the Levites. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, so it was it was the laws that God gave to regulate all of that kind of giving in the Old Testament. Right. Perfect. Right. And so they were making sure, okay, you Levites, I'm going to make sure you have just enough mint like you're supposed to have. And the Levites go, yeah, but you're not acting with love. I mean, thanks for the leaves. But what about love? And, and, and that's exactly what he says in the text here. Let's read this again. You tithe mint and rue and every herb and pass over judgment and the love of God. 
but these you ought to have done, or but these ought you to have done and not to leave the others undone. That means we do need to give the leaves. Jesus wants us to be serious and give everything, including the leaves, but also the love. Are we allowed to skip the leaves? No, Jesus says you need to do both. We need to do both. Woe unto you Pharisees, for you love the chief seats in the synagogues and the salutations in the marketplaces. What do they like to have? The chief seats. Fancy seats and chairs. The chief seats. And so if you draw draw a picture of a really fancy throne, right? You're drawing a picture of a fancy throne, and all of a sudden you're going to go, whoa, somebody important sits in that throne, right? That's the point of a fancy throne. I'm going to give it a purple velvet cushion, and I'll give it gold-covered wood. And then I'll, next to it, I'll draw like a dumb stool. I think stools are great, but I'm going to draw it like just a just a stool like that. And so which one do the Pharisees want to sit in? Nice. Oh. They want the fancy one. They want the nice one. And I can almost imagine that they would fight people to get it. What do you think Jesus would do if he was seeing these two chairs? Which one do you think Jesus would sit in? Yeah. So which one should we choose? Here's a question. If you're going to a room and there's a stool and there's a fancy chair, are you a sinner if you sit in the fancy chair? No. No, no. no. no not unless it's for God. Right, unless it's for God. What if you go into an old lady's living room and you see a hard chair and a big fancy chair? Which one should you sit in? Because the fancy soft chair is for the old lady, right? And so we got to think about, I don't want to just choose the comfiest, coolest thing for me. I need to choose the one that's actually right or appropriate for me and leave the honorable chair or the um, the lazy boy comfy chair for the other person all right mr tweedy your hand is up well uh and like a you know those dream poo mm -hmm. it kind of looks like a milking school it does school. it does look like a milking stool that's a cool i like that connection you're clever yeah all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read one more verse. Go <laughs> unto you, for you are as the tombs which appear not, and the men walk over them and know it not. So this is a, this is a funny one to draw. First, I'm going to draw it, and then we'll talk about it. So here's a man, and he's just walking. And isn't he just having a, oh. This is such a lovely day. Oh, this is just a lovely day. And he's just walking, okay? And he's walking on the grass. We'll draw some grass. And, oh, it's a it's it's beautiful grass. We might even draw, oh, there's even some, some pretty little flowers blooming. Oh, isn't this a lovely day? But what's buried under ground? What's beneath him, and he doesn't know it? Grave. A grave with skeleton bones. And if he knew that there were skeletons underground, do you think he would be feeling as, as happy about it? No. Mm -hmm. And what if one of the bones is kind of stepping up out of the ground a little bit? And then he accidentally touches it with his foot. How do you think he's going to feel? Terrified. Terrified and scared and run away. That's he would gross. Freeze. 
I don't want to touch this with my foot, even on accident. And so here, he, oh. He would scream. Yes, he would scream. And so here's the thing. In this picture right here, everything is wonderful. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. And we have hair and we have green stalks for the flowers. And it's just a good day, but he didn't know that he's walking over bones. And what mm -hmm. does he say that the Pharisees are? You are as <laughs> tombs, which appear not hidden tombs, and the men walk over them and know it not. He's saying, you guys, you guys with the broken hearts, that don't only look at the Bible, but you're also looking at idols and you're giving part of your heart to God and part of your heart to idols. You're not giving from your heart. In fact, you're only giving the leaves that the people can see. You're not giving your heart that nobody can see. You're cleaning the outside of the cup. You're not cleaning the inside of the cup. Do you know what you guys are like? You guys are like, bones underground that's going to cause problems to someone having a good day. I don't want to accidentally hurt somebody who's having a good day. I don't want Jesus to think that I'm a big pile of bones. I don't, yeah. want, I don't, I don't want Jesus to think that about me. I need to have a single eye. I mean, it's okay to have two, but looking only in one direction. That's what we need. <laughs> That's what we need. Okay. Well, I had fun. I think this is a good class. We didn't do a lot of verses, but we sure covered a lot of big... Pre you guys can all write a sermon right now. You could take your pictures, and you could just preach to your mom and your dad and your grandparents and your neighbors, because you know what the sermon is all about. About <laughs> having a heart. You can do the preaching. It's not that hard. Just look at the pictures and remember the story, and you can preach the sermon. You're ready for it already. I can't preach sermons. You can do it to your family. Come on. You can preach a sermon to your family. I bet. I bet if you walked up to a preacher at your church and said, hey, can I preach a sermon to you? I am almost 100% sure that that the preacher would be excited about it. He'd say, sure, do it. I want to hear it. And you'd be like, oh. I, I, I'm, I'm nervous to do it in here. Can we do it in another classroom? He'd say, sure, let's do it. A little while ago when you were talking about whether you would want the chair or the stool to give the other person the good one, it's like the verse, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. It's perfect. Because... You want other people to let you have the fancy chair. So you would sit in the ugly milking stool. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. All right. Well, I'm going to sign off on the, the, the recording for now, and I'm going to stop it, but I have had so much fun with you guys. Thanks a bunch.